There are many mistakes a seller makes when selling their home, be it an estate sale or a regular sale or a trust sale. There are mistakes made that can cost people their sale or a lot of money. So why do I say or a lot of money? Because sometimes there's something in the contract for sale that you can't get out of. And if you don't perform, the buyer can sue you and force you to hold up your end of the contract, even if it's not fair to you or something you didn't expect. Of the many mistakes, there are five that stand out as the worst ones, or at least the ones that tend to cost the sellers the most amount of money. Hey, if you like this video, at the end, give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you'd like to catch me weekly. So, number one, letting commission get in the way. As I've said in my other videos, there's no such thing as a standard commission or typical commission. By federal law, all commissions are negotiable. All commissions are negotiable. Fees with realtors are negotiable. Now, that's not to say that a realtor or a broker can't set their standard, but don't let anybody tell you there's a typical or market commission. So how do sellers let that get in their way? Some sellers will hire based on the lowest commission. And once again, while commissions are negotiable, the cheapest guy isn't necessarily the best guy, nor is the most expensive guy necessarily the best one. Hire who you're comfortable with. Just don't base it on the lowest price in town unless that's also the best one in town. If you're thinking about hiring a realtor, you can reach out to me and I'll give you my free no obligation guide on how to hire the best one what to look for, what to avoid, what to, you know, how to basically pick one. Number two, hiring the wrong agent. So you got to kind of segue into there. Select your agent based on the marketing plan and how well they listen to your needs. Their track record and reviews are important, such as how many houses they sell, but also what percentage of houses do they sell? Do they sell all their listings or at least a large percentage of them? Or are they a machine who just keeps churning them out only to have them fall off the market. The third mistake is the wrong price. In a seller's market, people tend to bid up when they see a quality listing priced fairly. It's not always ask high and leave room to negotiate down. It's actually better, a better strategy to price down and negotiate up with multiple buyers and multiple offers. So in this one, don't hire a realtor based on the person quoting you the highest price, particularly, particularly if that price is above any other quotes. And on that note, I hope you're interviewing more than just one person. Shop around, it's your right. Number four, underestimating costs. Even if you sell the house as is, there are still costs involved. Your municipality may have a use of occupancy certification that requires you to provide that certification to the buyer. This is one of those I'm not an attorney conversations, but if in the agreement of sale calls for you to give your buyer a UNO, you may be responsible for a significant amount of repairs and updates to things like your heater, chimney, sewer line, etc. that may not be covered by your as is clause. Consult an attorney for details on that one. And the fifth biggest thing sellers do to shoot themselves in the foot and cost themselves a lot of money, taking pictures themselves. Photographs should be taken to accurately and honestly represent what your house has to offer. They should be quality, professional pictures taken with plenty of light, keeping the word accuracy in mind. Professional staging, virtual staging, and other types of cleanup and minor upgrades all help, but not if you have terrible pictures online. The people who want to look at your house and will most likely overbid and get, participate in a bidding war will overlook your house if your pictures aren't good. It's just a turnoff. And if you're thinking about putting your house on the market, look below for a link to a very handy, very helpful putting a house on the market checklist that will walk you through some things you might not think of on your own. Well, I hope this helps you avoid the top five screw ups that sellers do to shoot themselves in the foot and cost themselves thousands of dollars. Let me know if you have any questions. And as always, thanks for watching.